Hello everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today I'm going to speak about the thoracic spine disc herniation. This is a condition that is fairly rare, especially when you compare it to the cervical spine and the lumbar spine. The thoracic spine is the medical name for the mid-back, while the cervical spine is the medical name for the neck, and the lumbar spine is the medical name for the low back. The thoracic spine has a lower rate of disc herniation than the cervical and lumbar spines. A symptomatic disc herniation in the thoracic spine is clinically rare. This rarity is attributed to the orientation, structure, and function of the thoracic spine. Many thoracic disc herniations are asymptomatic and are discovered incidentally with an MRI. Although a thoracic spine disc herniation is relatively rare, it should be considered in all cases of chest wall pain, rib cage pain, and mid-back pain. Majority of the cases of thoracic disc herniation are successfully treated with conservative management such as chiropractic care, massage, and exercise. The thoracic spine is the medical name for the mid-back. The thoracic spine contains 12 vertebrae and 12 intervertebral discs. Oftentimes the intervertebral disc is abbreviated to IVD. The intervertebral disc is numbered 1 through 12 and it is located inferior to the corresponding numbered vertebrae. In the thoracic spine, the vertebrae are numbered T1 through T12, and the corresponding intervertebral disc, which are located just directly inferior to the corresponding vertebrae, are numbered 1 through 12. The intervertebral discs are located between the vertebrae. The intervertebral disc is composed of two materials, the outer hard fibrous ring called the annulus fibrosus, and the inner soft gelatinous core named the nucleus propulsus. The intervertebral disc functions to absorb and distribute shock and to allow motion and flexibility of the vertebral column. As the body ages, the integrity of the intervertebral disc declines and causes the nucleus propulsus of the disc to protrude through the outer layer. The effects of this protrusion will be either compression on the spinal nerve roots or on the spinal cord. The pathophysiology of a thoracic spine herniated disc is believed to be a combination of mechanical compression of a nerve by the bulging nucleus propulsus and local inflammation. The origin may be traumatic or from a repetitive overload. The clinical presentation of a thoracic spine disc herniation varies widely depending on the location and characteristics of the disc herniation. It is more common in the upper thoracic spine at T1 or in the lower thoracic spine. The most common initial symptom of a thoracic spine disc herniation is pain in the thoracic spine. The pain may be located along the midline. It may be unilateral, meaning on one side, or bilateral, meaning on both sides. The pain may be described as sharp shooting shock-like pain, stabbing pain, or can also be described as numbness, tingling, and or burning, and possible weakness may be present. Nonspecific symptoms may exist, including chest wall pain, rib cage pain, epigastric pain, upper extremity pain, groin pain, and lower extremity pain. MRI is very sensitive and specific for diagnosing thoracic spine disc herniations. X-rays display the bone and joints, while MRI displays the soft tissue. So therefore, an MRI is very sensitive and specific for diagnosing a thoracic spine disc herniation. Prevention of all musculoskeletal injuries is imperative. Prevention is easier, faster, and less expensive than injury rehabilitation. Some of the tools that you can use to help to prevent a thoracic spine disc herniation include thoracic spine strengthening exercises, thoracic spine stretching exercises, thoracic spine mobilization, pull-up bar hanging traction, which is also known as dead hangs, posture correction exercises, chest muscle stretching, latissimus dorsi muscle stretching, and serratus anterior muscle stretching. 
strengthening of the scapular retractor muscles, which are the rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, middle trapezius, and lower trapezius, strengthening of the posterior rotator cuff muscles, which include the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor, and strengthening the posterior head of the deltoid muscle. Disclaimer alert. If you think you have a thoracic spine disc herniation, or if you have any other type of musculoskeletal injury, or any type of medical condition, please see a medical professional immediately. Do not hesitate. Watching this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. Please see a medical professional for any type of health condition. If you are preventing or rehabilitating a condition, always work through a symptom-free range of motion. Never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. If an exercise elicits or intensifies symptoms, please stop immediately and find a viable substitute. Always start any exercise program. It doesn't matter if it is a prevention program, if it is an injury rehabilitation program, or just a general health program. Always start at your current health, fitness, and strength level. And always increase the intensity of your training program in small, gradual, calculated increments. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have seen a multitude of thoracic spine disc herniations throughout the years that I've been practicing. As a doctor of chiropractic, I would perform a thorough examination, give the patient a diagnosis, and provide a treatment plan. Chiropractic care is going to help to restore proper skeletal motion and help to optimize nerve flow. The majority of cases of thoracic spine disc herniation are successfully treated with conservative management, including chiropractic care, massage, and exercise. You can use the same exercise plan that you use to prevent a thoracic spine disc herniation to rehabilitate a thoracic spine disc herniation. You can perform thoracic spine strengthening exercises, thoracic spine stretching exercises, thoracic spine mobilization exercises, pull-up bar hanging traction, which will help to decompress the spine. These are also known as dead hands. You can perform posture correction exercises, stretching exercises of the chest, latissimus dorsi, serratus anterior can be performed. Strengthening exercises for the scapular retractor muscles. These include the middle trapezius, lower trapezius, rhomboid major and rhomboid minor, strengthening exercises of the posterior rotator cuff muscles, including the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor, and strengthening exercises for the posterior head of the deltoid. Develop an individualized plan that works for your individualized needs. Thank you everybody for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report, where I covered the thoracic spine disc herniation. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book, and you can also find my blog. My blog contains articles on spine health, chiropractic care, sports medicine, nutrition, exercise, fitness, and general health. Please feel free to like this video. If you have questions, feedback, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube page, Dr. Donald A. Ozello, DC. Always remember to train hard, but train smart. Get adequate rest between training sessions. Utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you. Prevent all injuries, rehabilitate your injuries, and accomplish your goals.